looky here. This letter, Judge Joseph Woodruff, and again, I'm sorry, I think in YouTube it makes it backwards from you. But this is his official stationery, okay, his official stationery. It is, um, where's the date on it? April the 29th, right, when that case is pending, the uh, public records case is pending, and he sends his letter over to CASA, and he's like, well, you know, I, uh, uh, he imposed some sanctions on me, and he wanted to know if uh, I had made a correct statement about paying them something from eight years ago, okay, because I said I did, and so he, like, writes this letter. Okay, so now this, I want you to know, this is ex parte communication, okay, ex parte communication. It's clearly about me. It's clearly from a judge, and he's clearly doing an outside investigation. Do you see that? Again, we're going to go through this in detail on Zoom so you can see the whole thing in black and white. There's a case in Tennessee. It's called the Sherwin-Williams case, and it talks about judges doing their own independent investigation, which is strictly prohibited. And that was a case where a judge went out and inspected the property that was an issue before the court. This is the same thing. The judge decides on his own to go do an investigation and to, um, on his own accord, to get his own witnesses, right, on, a, on his own case. If you want to be a party to a case, you don't need to be a judge, okay? And he copied it to Dana McClendon down here. Copied to Dana, McClend Dana C. McClendon III, Esquire, okay, now Dana McClendon is an attorney. He doesn't say why he's copying it to Dana McClendon. I don't know if Dana McClendon is a judge's lawyer, Casa's lawyer. He is a Franklin alderman, okay? I'm very familiar with who he is. And then the Casa, Miss Emily Layton, Emily Layton, who has only been the Casa director since 2019. And I want you to notice up here, this is the case, okay? It's a public records request. Connie Regulay versus Mayor Rogers Anderson. That's the case number, 22CV51293, Chance Record of Williamson County. And Emily Layton does this affidavit dated May the 11th and says, no, I looked in our records and she didn't pay that, right? Now, this affidavit was never mailed to me was never provided to me. It's in the case. It's initiated by the ex parte communication of Judge Woodruff. And it's in the case file. Apparently, I don't even know. This is not even stamp filed. But it's certainly prepared. I'm assuming it's prepared by Dana McClendon. It is certainly prepared under this case. And that's what they used for their new indictment. So that's the crazy land I'm living in. I'm going to continue to fight this because I'm going to restore my credibility. And this nonsense is going to stop, okay? It's going to stop because they've been trying to silence me since 2008 when I've been seeking judicial accountability. I asked for cameras in the courtroom. They denied cameras in the courtroom. I asked for a litigant's bill of rights. They denied a litigant's bill of rights. I've asked for family advocates. They have denied family advocates and that DCS and other people from the judiciary have been involved in, in impugning me. Judge Woodruff impugned me after this conviction, he went to a public meeting and, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to be careful what I say here because he's going to, this is going to get back. I know this is going to get to Lisa Carson, the county attorney, Jeff Mosley, county attorneys. But at that meeting, his uh, cohort, Sean Aiello, who's in the pull type players with him, made a public statement that Williamson County, Williamson family should not endorse me as a judge because I had a felony. They extorted Williamson families to drop their endorsement of me for judge because of this fake felony created by Judge Woodruff. I am tired of being silent about it. Y'all need to know the truth. We need to share it. We need to be loud. We need to sh crush this. 
and so that we can have credibility, we can continue to get the changes that we need to have a fair and impartial judiciary. That is the last resort in America for resolving a dispute between parties is the judiciary. And if they are not fair and impartial and don't do this kind of shenanigans here, where they think they can write ex parte orders, do their own outside investigation, then call the DA, get an indictment on somebody, make themselves investigators, that all behind our back. And remember, this whole thing started with Wendy because it was behind my back. Ex parte means behind your back. So I'm preparing, I'm working on some other things. I've got a real rough month of November. I have, um, you know, they try to keep me in chaos, so I've got some motions and briefs that I have to write, and I'm going to have to bury my head and get down into my hyper, my hyper, hyper focus mode, because I have to sometimes just sit behind a computer, sit on my butt for hours, and type, and research, and draft, and type, and research, and draft, and some days I'm 10 hours on my butt doing that. So if you don't hear from me a day, I know some days I post, 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 some days you don't hear from me. I'm so sorry about that, but I'm going, I'm dry. I have to deal with this chaos. So I am going to continue to press forward. I love you all. Thank you all for being so awesome and uh, continue to, hold on here. Sorry, ah, lost my video. Continue to 